today we're going to be talking about COVID vaccine more extensively. And now we get to really focus in on that. I know I sometimes sound like a broken record, but vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. That is the best way to prevent the spread of COVID-19. So first off, just prefacing. So I cover my bases too. COVID-19 is still ever changing, ever evolving virus. We're finding out new stuff on the daily. We're still doing clinical trials. There's a new vaccine that came out, Novavax. And so there's a lot of rapidly changing information. As always, the CDC has usually the most up-to-date information. And as physicians, we are constantly sent newsletters and information on the changing guidelines. So your PCP or whatever clinic you're going to to receive COVID-19 information has the most up-to-date information. But sometimes things are said and have been said in the past, and they might have slightly changed now. So just as always, information is changing daily, but we're here to update you on all of it. We vaccinate to prevent. We want to keep each and every single one of you healthy. We want to keep our communities healthy. And in order to do that, there's steps that we have to take. One of them is obviously if you're sick, stay home, social distancing as much as possible. I know masks are the biggest thing anymore, but especially with summer coming out, crowded outdoor places, if you are immunocompromised or you have a person at home, maybe you're fine, but you have a loved one at home who say is going through chemotherapy. Maybe when you go out to um, an outdoor movie screening, just wear a mask. I know the outdoors is a better place to be, but especially in indoor settings as well. July is wedding season. And so for any events that we're attending, if we are in close quarters, wear a mask. In addition to wearing a mask, wash your hands frequently. Your phone is the most dirty thing probably. So make sure that you're on occasion just sanitizing it. They say our phone has more germs than like a toilet bowl, which I don't necessarily think is completely false. But while we're doing all of that, the biggest step that we can take is to vaccinate. And as more companies are coming out with vaccines and as vaccination information is changing, I'm here right now to talk to you all about all the information on vaccines and how vaccines protect our most vulnerable populations, but also protect us. What is a vaccine? So just really quick, we're going to get into it a little bit more, but a vaccine is an injection and it's a shot for getting a vaccine for COVID. It's a quick shot. What a vaccine does, we'll talk about a little bit the difference between the different types of vaccines. There's two different kinds of vaccines. Vaccines. There's a vaccine called an mRNA vaccine, and there's another one called a protein-based vaccine. So those two vaccines function a little bit differently. But this slide is just to say, I know that you guys like have to get vaccines pretty frequently. As children, your children need to get them a lot more frequently. And if for adults, the big vaccines that we think about are COVID and the flu. So you get your flu shot annually, then if you're a healthcare worker, you get a little badge on your thing saying, I got the flu vaccine. RSV, if you're above 60, shingles, pneumonia, eight tetanus, HPV, Hep A, Hep B. And I know it sounds like a lot, but really those vaccines occur infrequently. The ones that are more frequent is the flu shot yearly and the COVID vaccine. For COVID, if you have been vaccinated, the question is how often do I need a booster? If you have been unvaccinated, it's very specific to the age group and specific to the immunocompromisation of the individual. So if you're an immunocompromised individual, meaning that you have other underlying healthcare issues, or if you're above a certain age, usually it's 65, or if you're below a certain age, so with children, you might need to get boosted a little bit more frequently. What a vaccine does, the shot introduces the virus into your body, causes your body to create an immune response. So if your body is exposed to the virus in the future, it knows how to combat it. It's built the immune cells. It knows what to do moving forward. And so with COVID, if you are unvaccinated, there's three big ones that we talk about now. It's Moderna, it's Pfizer, and it's a new one called Novavax. But usually the way it works is that you get the vaccine and then six months later, you're eligible to get a booster if you have been completely unvaccinated. With Novavax, it's a little bit different because you get a dose of Novavax and then three to eight weeks later, you need to get another dose of the Novavax. And then after you get the Novavax, you can get boosted six months later by Moderna or Pfizer. And then with Moderna and Pfizer, you can also switch the boosting. So if I got initially a shot of Moderna, my boost your shot can be a shot of Pfizer. And so sometimes when you go to centers and clinics to get vaccinations, they might not have the one that you got previously. So 
it's okay to get a different kind. Why are we getting vaccinated? Vaccines are safe, they're effective, and with the CDC and government funding, they are free. So you should never have to pay a copay for your vaccine. So you take away anything from this presentation, finances should not impact your ability to get a COVID-19 vaccine. There are plenty of resources and plenty of places where you can get vaccinated from. And so again, like we said, you get the initial vaccine dose, and then every six months, you can get a booster, especially if you have elderly individuals in your home. We recommend boosters more frequently. And if you need to find a center to get vaccinated, I have a couple of slides on that. But if you go on the CDC, if you type in vaccines.gov or even text your zip code to this number, I tried it, it works. It'll show you all the vaccination sites. So sometimes it's clinics in the area. Sometimes you can even get them at pharmacies. And they have like these vaccine clinic pop-up shops still, which is really cool. Everyone age five and older should get an updated COVID-19 vaccine. Children six months to four years might need a couple more doses of the vaccine to be up to date. And so that's what we talked about. When we're little, our immune system is constantly building. And so because it's constantly building, we need to keep challenging it. It's like giving a kid a test. So you test them on their memorization multiple times, and then by the end of it, they're pros. And so the vaccine is basically testing your body. It's showing your body how to create an immune response. So if you are exposed to the virus, you can fight it and you have all the tools. It's basically the practice. If you play football, um, you got to go to practice and you got to get tackled a couple of times to know how to withstand a tackle. With the vaccine, it's similar. Practice is always safe. In a game, there's no telling what will happen. But in practice, nobody's ever going to tackle you so much where you get hurt. And so with practice, the vaccine is like practice. It's a little bit of practice for your body to learn how to fight the virus if it gets infected. But if you are, again, immunocompromised at any age, you can get additional booster vaccines. COVID-19 vaccination is kind of constantly changing. Basically, there have been studies and studies, and this is the one thing that's been very well proven, that people who are up to date on their vaccinations have a lower risk of severe illness, hospitalization, and death from COVID compared to people who are unvaccinated. So for me, that's all the proof I need. Please get vaccinated. It can prevent serious COVID infection, and we want to keep you all safe. COVID vaccines can be gotten at your local doc physician's office or at a pharmacy. Just type in that number to the CDC website to find out where to get vaccinated. This is the Fort Green Health Center, and they also provide low-cost immunizations, and COVID-19 vaccines should be free regardless of your insurance. And again, this is just on the New York City Gov site, and it's with the Department of Health, and they have an immunization clinics page. And these are a couple of free clinics. The one new one that I will introduce is the East Harlem Health Outreach Partnership. So that's one that I work with. It's called EHOP, but it's right near Mount Sinai Main Hospital. Uh, and EHOP, we do a, lo a lot of rehab as well, but we also do provide COVID vaccines. So most clinics that you do go to do provide COVID vaccines. This is just an additional one. So this is the fun stuff. This is the info. And this is on how the vaccines compare. So when you're kind of deciding what kind of vaccine you want to get, the CDC has multiple times said that it does not matter what vaccine that you get. There's nothing to show that one vaccine is more effective than another vaccine. So the vaccines, these are the ones that are out on the market right now. So there's Moderna, Novavax, and Pfizer are the ones that we commonly use in the States. The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, I don't see it used as commonly here, and Johnson & Johnson isn't used as commonly here. And so this is a graphic from the BBC, so that's why it says UK approved. But in the States, Pfizer, Moderna, and Novavax are being used. In terms of what kind of vaccine they are, so there again, there is no difference. If you go to a clinic and they only have Moderna, don't feel like you're getting slighted and you're not getting as good of a vaccine as somebody who got Pfizer. So there's not any hard evidence to show that one vaccine is better than another. But they are differences in the vaccine in terms of how they're stored. And that's what kind of leads to the difference in their ability. So Novavax is really great because you can put it at regular fridge temperature, which is huge. Everybody has a fridge. And so it makes it easier for the vaccine to be more readily dispersed. Moderna needs a colder temperature, but Pfizer needs an even colder temperature. So just that factors into availability of the vaccines. With all of them, you do need the vaccine and then the boosting. With Novavax, that's the only one where you get boosted a little bit earlier. So again, with Pfizer and Moderna, you get the initial shot. Six months later, you get a booster. With Novavax, you get the initial shot. Three to eight weeks later, you get a booster, booster of the Novavax. And then after that, you can get a booster of Moderna or Pfizer. The type of vaccine. So there's RNA and there's protein-based vaccines. This is just a quick little dive. So Moderna and Pfizer are RNA vaccines. 
So basically what happens is DNA and the viral DNA. So the viral DNA is injected into your arm, goes into your bloodstream. The DNA goes into your healthy cell. It causes your cell to produce some of the virus. The cell producing some of the virus allows for your other healthy cells to say, hey, I see this virus. I'm going to figure out a way to fight it. And it's going to cause the production of like our little soldiers in our body is what I like to call them, but little T helper cells. So those are immune cells that are going to form because uh, your body has been introduced to this virus. And so those immune cells form and then they become memory cells. So if your body is introduced to the virus in the future, it'll know how to fight it because it's fought it once before at a lower level. It practiced so it can play in the game. Slight difference with a protein vaccine, which is what Novavax is, is that you are actually getting injected with the antigen. So you're getting injected with the virus itself, like a small portion of the virus protein. And so your body is just mounting an immune response. You're not getting the DNA of the virus, you're getting a little bit of the actual virus into your body. Again, it's doing the exact same thing where it's being exposed to the virus. It's going to form these helper T cells, our little soldiers in the body to learn how to fight off the virus so that if it's exposed to the virus in the future, it knows how to fight them off. And the reason that the lungs are there is because COVID primarily impacts the lungs. So is it still going to work in my lungs? Yes. So if you get the shot injected in your arm, our blood runs throughout our body. These helper T cells and these immune cells are in our entire body. It goes here, goes, travels and through bloodstream goes everywhere. And so all your immune cells are exposed to this vaccine and learn how to mount the immune response and learn how to combat COVID. So when you get COVID, the vaccine, you do get a couple of the symptoms, like slighter symptoms, but it's just like after practice, your muscles feel a little bit sore because they exerted themselves. They learned how to withstand a tackle in football practice. They were exposed to it a little bit. You're not getting COVID-19 when you get the vaccine. The reason that you might feel a little bit sick, just a little bit under the weather is because you just went through practice. Your muscles got acclimated. They learned how to take a tackle. They learned how to play the game. And so if God forbid in the future, you have to play the game and you are exposed to the real virus, your body knows how to handle it. So it's going to be able to fight it a lot better than somebody who's never gone to crack compared to somebody who's never gotten the vaccine. When you get the mRNA, it's dead virus. When I get infected with COVID, I'm getting infected by live virus. This vaccine, even the antigen, the reason people get so scared about antigen is they're like, oh, am I getting infected with the real virus. That's not true. You're just getting infected with a dead portion of the virus. It's a small, small quantity. It's not making you sick. It's not going to harm you. It's just causing your cells to learn how to mount an immune response. It's forcing them to practice a little bit. It's getting them off the couch and into the field. This is just to say that usually for children who are not vaccinated, they recommend at least three doses of Pfizer, at least two doses of Moderna, and then two doses of Novavax followed by um, one of the Moderna or Pfizer. If you have had COVID-19, you should definitely, definitely, definitely stay up to date with your vaccines. Going back to this practice analogy, but even if you played the game once, you still need to keep practicing because God forbid you have to play the game again. If you just quit practicing after one game, if you need to play the game again, you're still as rusty. So the virus is constantly morphing and changing. And so we're getting new strains. And so that's why it's so important to keep challenging our immune response and to keep building up that population of helper T cells and immune soldiers to fight the real COVID if we do get infected. That being said, if you recently have COVID-19, it's good to just delay your vaccine by three months because your body just played the game so your muscles might be a little bit sore. If you get vaccinated earlier, it's not the end of the world, but it's best to do it after to make it the most efficacious. Again, however, if you are immunocompromised, then you might want to get vaccinated earlier. And then the last thing I want to touch upon is the Bridge Access Program. So that's something by the CDC, and that is a program created to help ensure that anybody who wants to get vaccinated can get vaccinated and that should be free of charge. So if you just look up Bridge CDC Access Program, you should be able to get information on vaccination sites near you.